A Canterlot Wedding. Boy, is this a divisive episode. Mainly due to the complexity of the plot. A lot of people say that Chrysalis's plan to take over Equestria was stupid and only almost worked through sheer dumb luck. But here's the thing. The plan worked. And I think it worked for very logical reasons that paints Chrysalis as quite the tactical genius. Yes, I'm putting forth the notion that Chrysalis's plan is actually brilliant. Here, let me explain what I mean. Easily the most common complaint against Chrysalis was, why did she act out of character? If she really was a changeling, she would have to act exactly like her target to avoid suspicion. Why didn't Chrysalis act nice to all of Cadence's friends? This makes it look like Chrysalis didn't do the recon on the person she was impersonating. This seems very careless and like a critical research failure. On the surface, in the magical land of Equestria, there's a little thing called the Elements of Harmony, which are a convenient fix-all-the-things weapon utilized by our little ponies. Quite the obstacle in taking over a country. How does one remove that as a threat? Well, let's think about this. I think Chrysalis knew about the Elements of Harmony, because, you know, Eternal Night, Chaos across Equestria, that's probably going to turn some heads. And there's the fact that during the climax, Chrysalis ordered a small unit to distract the main six while a noticeably larger number of troops secured the actual elements. It shows that Chrysalis knew the elements were a threat and acted accordingly, much like a tactician would. Then again, if Chrysalis knew about the elements, then she would know they need all six elements in order to get them to work. So getting rid of one bearer renders them all useless. This leads me to thinking that Chrysalis intentionally tried to villainize Twilight in order to separate her from her friends to render the elements useless. Notice how Chrysalis only acted out of character when Twilight was present, so only Twilight would point it out. Notice how everything Chrysalis did as Cadence would only be out of character to someone who knew her. Notice how she had the perfect excuse of wedding stress and a busy husband to fall back on in case someone decided to call her out. Notice how Chrysalis kept trying to get on Twilight's friend's good side while making Twilight look overly suspicious and possessive. This way, if Twilight ever found out about her secret, none of them would believe her. Maybe Chrysalis did do the research on her friends and acted in ways that perfectly manipulated them against Twilight. Notice the way she acted and worded things would sound mean to Twilight, but not to her friends, who don't know Cadence and chalk up bad behavior to stress. This is a gambit only a master manipulator, like a changeling, could pull off intentionally. There's also doing the mind control on Shining Armor with Twilight in the other room. Some would see that as stupidly risky, but... What if she meant for Twilight to see that and jump to the conclusion it was evil, just to have ammo against her when Shining Armor defended Cadence, and when everyone abandoned Twilight, she would be free to do with Twilight as she wished? No one would think to look for Twilight because she was banned from the wedding and they feel she should serve her punishment, and honestly, they were happy to be a part of the wedding. Another obstacle to usurpation that Chrysalis surpassed was Shining Armor and his Shield spell, which could conveniently block all threats out of Canterlot. This is a spell that neither Celestia or Luna can accomplish. How do you overcome that? Oh, how about impersonating his fiance and sucking all of his energy away? Keep your enemies close after all. This would also explain why Chrysalis didn't impersonate Celestia or Luna because they weren't the biggest threat that needed to be neutralized. One big thing that people associate as a tactical blunder on Chrysalis's part is Chrysalis revealing herself and monologuing like a James Bond villain. I think she was just buying time. Her minions were chipping away at the shield, and I think she needed to distract the ponies with her exposition dump long enough for the shield to crack because, you know, Celestia's in the room, and it would be easier to take her on with an army. She didn't need to in the end, to her surprise, but you get my meaning. Some people seem to think that Cadence's taunting of Twilight was unnecessary and only served to eventually help the two prisoners escape. While that is true, if you look at it a different way, if Chrysalis is a tactical genius, then this can take a pretty dark turn. Notice how her taunting caused Twilight to attack the real Cadence out of rage. What if that was intentional? What if Chrysalis intentionally sent Twilight down there to hurt and maybe kill Cadence? That way, if Twilight did manage to escape, she would have to go through more ponies, and after offing Cadence, offing three more ponies wouldn't be too hard. And if she came back, she would realize that she had killed the real Cadence and would probably become distraught and broken, and wouldn't resist the invasion due to her despair, possibly even committing suicide, forever rendering the elements of harmony useless and giving Chrysalis free reign to enslave Equestria under a parasitical tyranny! Oh sweet Celestia, what is wrong with me? In all seriousness, maybe Chrysalis wasn't going that far. Maybe she was just toying with her prey. After all, she did set up guards outside in case they managed to escape, so that shows she figured they might make it out. This does certainly seem fitting of the manipulative persona they were trying to build for Chrysalis, if a little 
disturbing. Even though most of this is theory, it is reinforced with the fact that Chrysalis would be a tactical genius because it's been shown. Early on, Chrysalis had a contingency plan in case Twilight and Cadence actually escaped the prison. Obviously, three unicorns might not do well against the element of magic and the princess of love, but think about Chrysalis as a manipulator here. These ponies are brainwashed. Would they be willing to fight and beat up innocent ponies to escape? It's a great plan, but it ultimately failed because... The plot demanded it. Seriously, how could a Chrysalis predicted that? Yes, Chrysalis' plan ultimately failed because of Deus Ex Machina, and there's not much you can do against that. Though I gotta say, it kinda speaks to the skill of the writer when they create a villain plan so perfect that they write themselves into a corner and are forced to Deus Ex Machina themselves out. If you look at it this way, Chrysalis' plan was pretty much perfect. Chrysalis played her cards expertly, taking care of her biggest threats from most to least. While others may see a fool, I see a genius who did her research, expertly manipulated ponies against each other, including Twilight and her friends. It's not your fault. She fooled every pony. Mm, I did, didn't I? Maybe we're not giving Chrysalis enough credit. Maybe if we think about this the way the writers intended for us to see, we'll see some actual brilliance. Or maybe I'm just taking this too seriously. <laughs>